Hi everyone, hope you are having an awesome day. Today, I'll be sharing my routine as an almost full-time in the day. Every morning, I get up at 6 for a meditation session, which I follow up with a light workout. And I walk in the park of my city. After breakfast, I start working on my game. A very important aspect of every game, but even more so a stealth game, is having a great level design. Something that I felt was lacking, especially in the first levels of the game. So I have been redesigning some of the levels to make them feel more cohesive and in some cases more claustrophobic. The first level of the lab was a small box where all the dangers were focused on a small part. Now the enemies are more spread out you have small areas without enemies where you can rest from the action and plan. This was the philosophy behind most of the redesigns, having safe areas and danger zones, while also reducing the space where nothing happens. I was using an online paper to design the levels, but I kept deleting all my work with no way to recover it. So I decided to move to drawing them on a sprite, which turned out to be the right call. At 12.30, I usually start preparing my lunch, which mostly consists of Mexican dishes. This time, I'm preparing some gorditas. At 1.30 p.m., I go back to work. I decided that sticking to walls was really finicky, and I almost considered removing it entirely from the game. Here's how it was working before. I had a couple of different colliders, some for small spaces and some for regular spaces which made the sticking to walls quite unresponsive. It also made that when you were crawling and you got close to a wall, you started sticking to it, which was kind of annoying. So I changed it to one long collider with a special activator in the small spaces, which activates the unstoppable mode. So you don't have a choice but to go out of the small space. Also, you can now crawl right into the wall without getting up. Well, it's 5 p.m., time to start my part-time job. You can like my video and subscribe to my channel while I finish teaching my English class. Like the camera is more of a close range gadget and the dooter produces sound in an area, the on-screen reticle was a little bit useless. So now it appears only when you are charging the bone throw, which will vary in speed and distance depending on the time you hold the button. I made this possible with some code wizardry. The code detects if you are pressing the attack button, which starts a core routine that adds force to the projectile the longer you hold it. This will only work if you have the cooldown available. I also wanted the game to have a more cartoony feel, so what better way than adding a couple of anomatopoeias? This gets called from an object puller, which activates them in the correct time. I added a little timer so you don't get flooded with visual cues. I think they look quite cool. I changed the menus a little bit by adding a V-Sync option and the visual timer with a post-it note so the menu looks papery. And finally, I hide away some of the unlockable costumes. Most of them give you a visual change only, but they look cool, especially after you unlock the fight mode, while the ones you unlock by getting achievements often have special skills. Hope you can try and find them all. This is the final devlog for Bonnie's Research on Humans, which makes this video bittersweet. I have been working for this project uh, for more than a year, and I'm really happy to finally get it to a state worthy of release. Uh, I'm really grateful to all my Kickstarter backers and Patreon supporters. Without you, I couldn't have made this project a reality. I hope you have a lot of fun with the final project, and that you enjoyed a small look into my daily life. Here's a special shout out to my supporters on Patreon. If you like what I'm doing and would like to make to see me make more content like this, you can support me. And here's the monster hero, Fernando Mata. And stay safe and see you soon.